Hello guys, let's talk more about nuclear chemistry. So we discussed already nuclear reactions in which a nucleus decays spontaneously, such as alpha and beta decay, positron emission and electron capture. Now in nuclear transmutations, we are going to have a nucleus that reacts with a subatomic particle or another nucleus to form a product nucleus that is larger or more massive than the star material. Nuclear transmutation reactions occur only under very special conditions such as the collision of a beam of highly energetic particles with a target nucleus in particle accelerators or in the interior of stars. This is from where our sun is getting its energy. Now, nuclear transmutations have been used to produce the elements with atomic numbers above 92, and these are known as transuranium elements because they are after uranium in the periodic table. For example, curium-242 was created using plutonium 239 which was bombarded by alpha particles now new advances in the detection of single atoms have led to recent additions to the periodic table mind-blowing right so between 1994 and 2010 elements 110 through 118 were discovered via nuclear reactions that occur when nuclei of much lighter elements collide with really really high energy so actually the first nuclear nuclear transmutation was done by Ernest Rutherford in 1919. He converted nitrogen-14 into oxygen-17 using alpha particles, and here is the reaction for the process. Now, we know that we can call these particles different ways. So, for example, uh, helium nucleus is the alpha particle, right? And then here we have H11, that is going to be a proton as it is shown right here in this handy table from a previous video so i can call this a proton which is designated with the letter p so there are two different ways how we can write nuclear transmutation reactions and there is a shorter way so we will start with the nucleus that is the target okay so the target in this case was nitrogen 14 so this is our so-called target nucleus and then it was bombarded with alpha particles so this is going to be called our bombarding bombarding particle Okay, so this is the same alpha particle right here. Then we will have to show the ejected particle, and that was the proton, right? So proton, this is the ejected particle. And we have a product nucleus, which was the oxygen 17, so O17 and 8, the atomic number. So these are the two different ways how we can write out a nuclear transmutation reaction. Now, there is one more thing that I want to talk to you about in this video, and this is concerned the so-called mass defect. So the masses of nuclei are always less than those of the individual parts. So what does this mean? This means that if I take a helium nucleus, which contains two protons and two neutrons, and I weigh out the protons and the neutrons separately and add together the masses, I'm going to get a larger volume for the mass compared to the nucleus of a helium 
atom. And this is connected to the energy that is produced during nuclear reactions using Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, where we can simply convert the mass, in this case this mass defect, into energy using the speed of light as our constant. Now the energy needed to separate the nucleus into its nucleons, so neutrons and protons, is called the nuclear binding energy. If we divide the nuclear binding energy by the number of nucleons, so neutrons plus protons, it is going to give us a value that we can compare for different nuclei. And that is shown in this figure right here. We have the mass number here and the binding energy per nucleon right here. So as you can see that as we increase the mass number, we are going to increase the binding energy. And we are going to have these lighter particles that are going to combine in a so-called fusion process. And during this process, they are going to emit great amounts of energy. This is actually what is happening in our sun. This is why we get that radiation from the sun towards Earth. Now, however, when we have heavy elements on this side, we are going to be able to stabilize these heavy nuclei by having them split into smaller pieces. And this process is actually called fission, the process used to generate energy in nuclear power plants. And the processes of fusion and fission are separated by iron-56 nucleus. Interesting, right? I hope this makes sense. See you in the next video.